Hello Reborners, my name is Karen and this is Making Dolls with Karen. We're back with, J with Jade and we're going to root some front hair now. Uh, after I get a good bit of the back hair done, I like to start on the front because we're going to be moving back on the forehead up to the top of the head and we want to make sure that we have enough hairs going forward before we finish the back. Hairs on her. <laughs> Stuck on her face. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to be working on first is her front hairline. And what I like to do is start at the beginning of the ear right here, come across to the beginning of the ear here. That way we can keep it sort of sort of straight. We're never going to have it completely straight unless you're just super artistic and you can draw a completely straight line. Uh, I, I don't always draw a line. Sometimes I just freehand it. It's a lot more crooked when I freehand it, but it doesn't matter. We don't want to start, we don't, we don't want to root where we want the hair to stop. We want the hair to stop there, not begin there. Where we start, my fingernails are so dirty from painting. Uh, where we start rooting is where the hair begins. So if we go all the way down to here to rooting, it's gonna hang in her face. We want the hair to maybe end here. So we're gonna, it's, it's weird. It's, it, it seems really, really weird. But the further back you, you root your hairs that go forward, the better it's gonna look. Uh, because it's gonna hang forward anyway, and it's gonna cover what you want it to cover. But it's not going to be uh, that puffy, like I was telling you about when we were talking about the back. Too many rows of hair, too, too thick rooted hair, it all makes it just kind of puffy and stick up. And so we don't want it to do that. So anyway, we're going to start with our new pile of hair here. It's got a little twisted in the bag because I took it all out of the bag and then I just crammed it back in there like that and it just, it won't hurt it a bit. It's going to, uh, it's, it's going to root just fine. Uh, this is a half of a bundle of hair that I cut in half, and I, I immediately take their crappy, crappy rubber band off. That rubber band is so crappy. It's not even really a rubber band, I don't think. And I put one of my little black rubber bands on. They're super good. They're the kind that mommies get when they're gonna braid their little girl's hair. You know, little girls don't have all that much hair. And so they don't want to put a big fat rubber band on their head. So they use these little bitty ones. They stretch real good. They hold their hair together, but they're not super, super tight where it would like pull their hair and make them cry or anything. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it holds the hair just right. You want the rubber band to be tight enough to keep your clump together, but loose enough that it'll let uh, hair slip out when you're rooting, but not so loose that big bunches slip out. Uh, I've had that before with a rubber band and I have to stop and change it. It happens usually when you have rooted for a good while with your bundle and it's getting sparser and sparser. <laughs> your bundle is, that is. And then the hairs will start, when, when the hair you rooted pulls out, it'll pull more hairs out with it. And then you're just losing hair. So you have to stop and kind of redo your bundle. and. Uh, from time to time we do that. But anyway, we're gonna get started here on the front of her hair. And uh, you can see where I, I penciled on some hair. Maybe you can see it, I don't know. You can still faintly see the lines, but I wiped it right off. I was doing it to show my student how to pencil on hair. And uh, I didn't want it on my doll because I was gonna root her. So I just wiped it off. But anyway, we're gonna start right here at the top tip of the ear right here. We're not gonna put one on the ear, but this is our guide. We're going to, and we're gonna come up kind of like this. Keep in mind, we can always put more hair in the front if we don't like it. What we wanna do is keep a good distance between where we root and where we're gonna end up. It makes the hair look nicer. So, and, and on this, we're gonna to try to be very uh, sparse in the rooting. And by that, I mean every now and then there's gonna be a hair. So anyway, here we go. We're, and we need to face up. And we're, here I'm gonna push in this one. 
as I'm going around, I'm going to be changing the angle. I'm pushing it, but I'm going to be way up here doing it. But I'm, anyway, I'm just showing you. I'm going to be at a different little angle going all the way around. We're not just going to go push, push, push. push. That, all the hair would go over to the side if you did. I mean, if you want your hair to go over to the side, that's a great way to do it. But we don't want that. This is a girl. Anyway, uh, like right there. See? One more wispy hair. And I think it has a tiny little piece off the side of it. You can just pull it out if you want to. At this point, I just don't see any need to do that. We may pull that whole hair out. So we're just kind of making our little guide right here of what we're not going to go in front of if we can help it when we're rooting. And uh, we're, see how far apart the hairs are? We don't want hardly any hairs in this very first row. And uh, I'm going to turn over this way, and I'm going to do this one a little bit. I rooted a little more on this side than I did on this side, but I'll catch it up. Um, I'm going to turn over to this side, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to punch in a hair here and there. And uh, this is our first row. And uh, if it looks like that, you just pull some of it out. I mean, it's you don't have to... You don't have to see a clump or anything, but uh, we're gonna come up. Yeah, we're coming up like this, okay. So we're gonna come up this way a bit. And this is very far back. You're gonna say, what is she, a bald man? <laughs> One of those men losing their hair? Well, yes, she kinda is. We're gonna go in front of these hairs probably. I'm just making a demonstration for you to see where you might want to stop rooting. And all of these hairs could stay, all of these hairs could be pulled out, or some of the hairs are pulled out because they just don't look right or they're in the wrong place or they don't match the pattern or whatever. Uh, we're just trying to make a line across her head. And it's gonna not even meet hardly because I'm getting off cue here. It's come across here and I'm down here. But anyway, we're gonna just do it and get across here. And whenever we get ready to, to really, really make her hair hairline, we're gonna have some guide. Now see, this hair is long. See, I want you to see how long this hair is. It's this long. It, it still hangs in her face from way back here. It, it'll hang down to her lips. So putting hair in front of that, unless it's super short hair, it's not going to be beneficial to her look. In fact, it's going to take away from her look. Now you might not can see all the hairs, but there's a row of hair going across here. And we're gonna use that as our guide to start coming this way with hair. And we won't go past this circle because that's the crown and that's usually where the hair breaks from being back here to being front hair. So, uh, and I don't even know how hair got way down there. I don't even want hair way down there. So we're just pulling that right out. Okay, there we go. Uh, and this is where you would start, the, where this hair is right here. That's where you would start the little sideburns if you want to give them sideburns. Me, myself, I can't stand them. I end up pulling them out. But if you want sideburns, by all means, get sideburns. Uh, you just root it very sparsely and kind of long so it can lay on top of each other. Not super long like this hair, but you know, you want it to lay on top of each other and look like a little baby sideburn. I don't think babies have sideburns. That's why I don't like them. I mean, they just look funny. They make them look like a man. Y'all have to excuse me. It's 11 o'clock and I haven't even had my first cup of coffee. I've been sort of burning the midnight oil at night. And so I've been a little bit tired. <laughs> and I've been laying in bed a little bit longer. And I gotta work myself out of that. I don't like being in bed that long. I like to be up by six at least. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start right now coming this way with our hair. And right in this section, we have to root at this angle. 
and then right here we're going to root at this angle, kind of like that. So you're going to see me turn in the head just a little bit every time I root. And way up here in the front, we want super, super wispy hair. I'm just turning my hand right now because it's a little bit easier than turning the head every time you poke a hair in. See, you still can hardly see any hairs. That's because the ones that lay over the top of it are going to be the See how long that is on her forehead? Can you see? It's super long. It's way, way too long, even way up here. So we're going to uh, continue to root across this little uh, section here. It won't be real, real straight, and it doesn't even really need to be real, real straight because uh, we're going to be uh, straightening it up later as we, we're rooting. We'll find that we, oh, I need to put a hair there. Or, oh, I need to take a hair out of there. So we're still being super sparse. We're going to do two or three rows where we hardly put any hairs in at all. Nothing close together, nothing touching for sure. And uh, we're just going to go around the head like this and just, that's what we're going to do. And, uh, Same thing over here if you wanted those little sideburns. You'd go right down right here by her ear and you'd put the sideburns. Okay, now we're gonna go back with another row. We'll just move in a little bit and continue to do what we're doing. You see I'm moving from this angle to this angle because it right through here is one of your sharpest angles you're gonna be changing. It's, it's, uh, one of the areas where you might actually break your needle. <laughs> see, we got several rows here now, and it's very wispy. You don't see hardly any hairs. And it's, but what we're doing is we're making it where it's gonna lay down so beautifully, look at that. So that other hairs are gonna be on top of that, and other hairs on top of that, and it, it'll start to make it look thicker. There'll be a few little wispy hairs that, and babies have hair like that anyway. So we're doing great so far. Uh, if you're following, just continue to turn your head slightly uh, until you learn how to really turn your, your hand without breaking your needle, you're gonna need to turn your head. When I'm changing like this, you're gonna need to turn your head. And the very first poke is going to tell you if you've got the, you know, if, if you've got an angle that won't break your needle or not. So take a very nice, careful poke the first time, and then you can poke two or three times in that area to get a few little wispy hairs like that. Then we're going to turn again, make a poke, make a couple more pokes, and we're just we're just making a very sparse rooting and then I'm just going to pick up my speed a little because it takes forever and a day at that speed. Uh, now you go as slow as you need to uh, but you can keep referring to what I'm doing to see if you think you're doing the same thing. Very wispy, hardly any hairs. If you think it's too thick, pull some out. Just, just pull on it a little bit like that. If you pull hard, you pull every bit of it out. And we want to try to stay as flat See how that needle looks? It's almost flat. It's going in almost flat with the head. You can't take a much steeper angle than that. If you start getting even more flat like this, you'll just be staying within the vinyl. You won't be poking anything inside the head. And it, and it will break your needle. So, <laughs> anyway, here we go. I'm staying at the very tip of the, uh, of the uh, hair where you can see one or two hairs sticking out, and we're trying to get one or two of those to go in the head. Sometimes you'll get more, like three or four, but you can always pull some out. And you don't even have to do it right now, especially if you're wanting to get some hair put across here and, you, and you're going kind of fast like I am. You don't really have to uh, stop and pull the clumps out right now. You can do that later. Before we start in, in, a, in another row or two, we're going to start rooting. See, I'm not getting any hair right there. I don't know why. In another row or two, we're going to start rooting uh, 
thicker. But right now, this, this is as thick as we can go and still have a nice head of hair. And uh, it's gonna take us a couple rows. It may take a couple of passes to get the rows right. I mean, we're not trying to stay in a straight, neat row. We're just going back and forth and back and forth and going behind the hair in front of it. It doesn't have to be even. You certainly do not want to purposely try to root one hair directly behind the other because it's so sparse, it would actually be better if you're gonna purposely do anything that you purposely root in between. See, look at that. To me, that's beautiful. That is some beautiful rooting right there to me. The directionality is great. The sparseness is going to be just perfect. But see how this is what I'm talking about. Hair here, hair here. There's no hair here. But up here there is. You see? So it's, it's working out to where hair, 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 and these hairs are between those. But they're up here. And, and it makes you not have just a whole long string of emptiness. I tried that line method where you go up and down the lines. And I think the doll I rooted looked pretty good, but I just thought the hair was too sparse in some places because you're staying on a line and you're rooting right behind the hair you just rooted. And then there's a, a blank space in between it. I, I'm not fond of that. <laughs> now we're getting back to this part. I don't know what these little specks are. But sometimes it's in darker hair. It's not a bug or anything. I actually thought one time it might be some kind of bugs, like fleas or something that might be on the goat. And, and they died in the process of processing the hair. But they don't, I, I got one of them off and looked at it real, real close. It's not a bug. It's just some little speck. I don't know what it is. Okay, we're getting right to this part again where I said it's, it's a, a, a very easy spot to, to uh, break your needle. Because this is a steep turn right here. You punch, 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 punch. You're just going around like that the whole time. And uh, you can just, if you're not careful, you know, the, the sharpness of turning. That's where, that's where turning the head comes in rather than turning your hand. Because if you're not used to the way you're going to turn your hand, you'll go in at the wrong angle and it'll just snap your needle in two. And so, and don't think I'm immune from that because I've done it many times. Sometimes I can root three or four heads with the same freaking needle. And other times... I break five needles on the same head. These Bountiful Baby Heads are the best kinds of heads to try to root. They have just the right amount of uh, softness to their skulls, heads, whatever you want to call it, that um, the hair will pretty much go right in. And uh, their heads aren't so hard. Those uh, I, I made two babies from those kits I got from McPherson's and their heads were super hard and thick and when I tried to root that one little doll I couldn't root the other one because it got a split in its head I think I told you about that uh, I suddenly could see through the head right up here and I thought what and I looked inside and I held it up to the light and sure enough I could see light right through it and I could tell that it was just about to split and so I, I said okay well I'm done painting her and I just turned her head upside down and squeezed a bunch of E6000 in it and propped it up upside down like this and it self levels. You don't have to even brush it around in there. It'll self level. And uh, and let it sit for two or three days and, and I know it cured. And uh, now her head feels like a rock. There would be no way to root her now. So I just drew it on, I drew pencil hair on it. Them's the breaks when you're making dolls. Sometimes stuff happens. I'm gonna get me some of that vinyl putty. It's just a liquidy, squeezy out of a tube, I think, stuff they call putty. And it's, you you just put it like, say there was a crack right here. Let's just say her nose was a crack. And you would just put it on there 
and then you would smooth it out the best you can. I mean, super smooth it. You know, get something that, and maybe even you have to put water on it to smooth it, I don't know. But then when you're all finished doing that and, it, and it's the way you want it to be, you have to bake it and that will set it in and, uh, and it will close up whatever problem you had. And I've heard people saying they used it on their doll and uh, how they used it and stuff. And you know, I didn't even know there was such of a thing. What kind of person am I? See, I can tell that a lot more is rooted on this side up at the front than it is here. So I'm gonna add a little now. This is where I was talking about, this might not even be the, the final line that we're gonna use for her hair. I just wanna add a little bit because I tend to be more, um, root better on some parts of the head because I, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it has to do with that, I think. Uh, it's more natural in some areas, feels more natural and the other way feels backward or something. Okay, so we've got quite a bit now of front hair and it's very wispy, but look how good and long it is. And we have great coverage for, a, for the front hair, I think. Great, great coverage. We're gonna need a little more in this area, but see this hair can go here, it can go here. You know, we have directionality. We can put it this way, we can put it this way, because we put it all in the right place and the change from one area to another area was so slight that the hairs can actually have a little bit of leeway to go whichever way you want them to go. And that is something that you want in your rooting. To me, it's more important than mono rooting because uh, most all the time, none of this hair is gonna look like it's clumpy, none of it. Nobody's gonna go, oh, you made clumpy hair. They're not even gonna see this part right here that looks a little bit clumpy, they're not even going to see it. Hair's going to be thickly rooted over the top of it. And so, what's with that mono rooting? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, uh, all I know is I can make a head of hair, and it looks pretty good. I have to get my coffee down, or I'm going to fizzle out. Okay, so now that we've got several rows of very wispy hair, we don't have to worry about, we're gonna have some puffy big lump up here because all these rows were just real, real, real thick. So now we can start, and I've already started. The first row was really thin. The second row was a little bit thicker. This row has quite a bit of hair in it, but it's still sparse. So we're gonna move into the next row and it's gonna be a lot more filled in. And we're gonna go from this hair, some of this hair is gonna have to be done a little different when we get over here. So I'm gonna start here because see, I know you can see the directionality here. This hair is supposed to hang over the ears right here. And this should go all the way up to the crown, Whoop. all the way up here. And it's not yet because we stopped to do the front hair. And the same thing over here. This hair that covers the ears has to come all the way up a little bit. Not completely, because we still have some here to, it, it's, it's really hard to explain. We still have some here to fill in. See, here, 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 here. You see how I'm doing? Uh, it's it's gonna fill in uh, to be, oh, I don't know about that hair. It's sticking up too much. Uh, but anyway, it's gonna fill in to where the same thing, the back is super full. I, I tend to be a heavy rooter. And this is what I'm talking about. A lot of hair is gonna hang over. When I started the back, I did the same thing. A few little hairs at first, the next row a few little more hairs. And you see now, it looks like a full, full head of baby hair, full, full. I used a lot of filler hair on the back. So you see, not not much of it's real long because it doesn't need to be real long. It's baby hair. And you're wasting your hair when you put really, really long hair and then just cut it off. Some people think you have to have really long hair. And see, I, I've, I've made the little circular thing here. So as I'm rooting around, it's going to fall correctly. I went all the way in a circle a couple, six times, I guess. 
to where you can make this hair go whatever way you need it to go. See, it's just got some directionality to it. I love that word directionality. You're going to hear me use it a lot. But anyway, that's how we're doing it. This is all going to have to be filled in. But before we do that, I want to make sure I've put enough hair to go forward. This is the most important hair because that's what people are going to look at when they're holding their baby. They're not going to go, oh, look at my baby. They're going to go, oh, look at my baby, you know? And so they're going to want their baby to have a nice front hair. So anyway, we're going to keep going. I'm going to do a little right here in this bad corner and a little bit right here in this bad corner. And then we're going to keep moving back a little bit. And as we get to like right here, we're going to start turning a little bit and turning a little bit. And we'll be filling all this in as we're going. See, it's weird. These hairs fall down this way, these hairs this way, these hairs this way, these hairs, and it just goes around. If you really have, was of a mind, <laughs> you could go one row all the way around the head. <laughs> one row all the way around the head, but it's harder that way. I did try to do that early on when I was first learning, and it's super, super hard. <laughs> and you're turning the head forever in a day. Anyway, I'm going to do a little rooting right in here to kind of fill it up into here like so that we're done with that super bad corner right there. It's just super bad. It's in it's in a part of the head that it's just hard to, to root correctly and you have to be very uh, precise about getting the hairs at the right angle right in here. I don't know if you can tell I'm turning my hand as I go because I'm really, really used to doing it. And that doesn't mean I won't break a needle though. You may hear the needle snap or I might go, oh, I just broke it, you know. And it's, it's, not, it's not such a bad thing unless you're running out of needles. I always recommend that everybody get their needles from Dolls by Sandy because they have the compact needles. And here's the thing with the compact needles. They're a little bit shorter, so that's why they're called compact. And this this thick, heavy part comes down further. It has it has two two different places where the uh, the needle gets thinner. It's real thick and fat up here. Then it gets a little bit thinner down here, and, and then when you get right here, it starts turning into the part you're going to root with. It's called compact. The other needles. They just go down to about right here, and then the rest of it's skinny. So you have all that real, real skinny part, which is easily broken, easily. But these are stronger. And even though they say all needles are German made, they're not all made in Germany. And they're not, just like we farm out some of our work to other countries, they do too. A lot of them are made in Portugal, and they use steel from Portugal. The steel that comes from Germany is the best steel, the strongest steel. And this is a German-made needle made with German steel. So uh, that's why I get them from Dolls by Sandy. Uh, you can get as many or as little as you want. I think a three-pack is the least you can get, but you don't want to fool with that. Uh, I get the 25-pack. Sometimes I get two of them. Especially when I was first starting out, I broke needles like crazy. But uh, I didn't have a coach to say, no, turn it this way. No, do it like this. You know, I didn't have that. So uh, you do. So maybe you won't break as many. You're still going to break some, but I was going every few minutes getting more needles. I had to stop rooting a doll because I broke all 25 of my needles. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I say... Make a punch, make a real soft, easy punch first. See if the ne needle's gonna go in at that angle good. And if you've got a good angle, then you can punch a few times like this and go on and get a few hairs in. And, uh, and since, we're since we're using much longer hair now, that other hair is what I call, see it's much shorter. It, it looks as long as this, but it's not. Uh, 
I call it fill-in hair. We were using fill-in hair to root some of this because it's not gonna matter, it's underneath. Anyway, see, we're rooting really, really long hairs now. And we want to get all of this crazy directionality correct. Once you figure it out, if you just keep following what I say, you're gonna see it for yourself. It's magically just gonna appear in front of your eyes and you're gonna go, oh, I know just what to do right there. You have to keep pulling hair out of your hair, out of your toothbrush because it does get in there. And see, now that we're over here and we're doing it, I'm seeing that I'm not liking these hairs right here. I'm pulling them out. They're too far down. I know we're going toward the ear. I don't need them that close to the ear. There we go. See, this could actually be some kind of little sideburns, but it's too, coming from too far up. It would need to come from like here if you wanted sideburns. I don't like sideburns. I don't do them because they just look stupid to me. Anyway, so we've almost got this corner finished. And we're going to be moving on to um, back to the front. And see right here. Right here, where we're at right now. If I keep going this way, then the hair is going to come to a, like a, a square there. At some point, it's going to meet, and it's going to look funny because this is going down and this is coming back, and it's just going to make a like a square. So we have to turn, slightly turn, a little at a time to keep from doing that so that our directionality isn't disturbed and we don't have a sharp bend in our hair. So ovals, think ovals. <laughs> Work out of the box and into the ovals. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna start turning now to this direction, but we're gonna slowly do it across this section right here. It's, until you're doing it, it doesn't really make sense. You're gonna mess up a few heads. That's why I said if you can get a hold of some practice heads, they can be any heads. They can be dolls you reborn and you think they're butt ugly and you don't want to strip them. Practice on that one. Uh, dolls by Sandy has some great priced hair. It's as good, if, if not better, than what Bountiful Baby says. It's comparable to the ruby red that Bountiful Baby sells, which they want probably three times as much for. This is a this is a half ounce, but it's cut short. Uh, when I get my half ounce, I I put an extra rubber band on it and I cut it in half. And uh, this is half of the length. And uh, it's it's like sixteen dollars, but at Bountiful Baby, a fourth, which would be half this bundle. Half as much hair, it would be longer, but half as much hair. And it's $29.99. And this is absolutely comparable to it. And some people don't think, some people think the more you pay for your hair, the better. Well, in some instances, that is true. I don't know where on the goat they cut that extra special hair off, but I don't know. This is kid hair. It's a kid is a kid is a baby goat. In case you don't know, and it's the first cutting off of the baby goat. When they first get old enough and their hair is long enough, and they're going to cut the hair off, that's what this is. And uh, first cutting, that's what they advertise. Okay, see, now I'm going to go this way a little bit to keep from making a square on the head. But this, we're, we're getting into the wispy part again. So we're only just now gonna be starting to root heavier hair. So it's hard, hard to explain this, that it's gonna come out right. Heavy, wispy, just wait. And besides, we're gonna come back after we're done with all the hair. We're gonna look it all over and we're gonna decide if any of it needs to be uh, filled in anymore. And we're just now starting to put some heavier hair, so I'm gonna start putting some heavier hair right here. Because we're coming off of this heavy hair, we don't wanna go not thick, nothing, you know. This part's gonna be slightly heavier on this first row, see it's already heavier, than 
some of this on top is going to be. This part will be slightly heavier at first. But this is going to catch up, don't worry. I got it all figured out. I took a long time. I sat down one day after I was unable to root ahead, and I said, you know, what's the most important thing in rooting a doll? Well, it sure ain't getting one hair in each hole. I know that because I can't even get one hair in a hole. I think the most important thing is getting hairs in the doll's head. And I said, and then my hair looks funny. It doesn't have any proper, it doesn't fall right. And I thought, if I can get the directionality correct, that would be everything. And uh, so I decided I'm going to give up on those needles that most people use in favor of learning to do hair. And then later, if I want to, I'll get those needles with one barb and I'll start rooting. See how, see how that lays right over the top of that really wispy stuff and it's thicker? And we're gonna keep on doing that all around the, this, this portion of the head now. And I said, I, I'll, then I'll get those one barb needles and I'll start rooting that mono hair. But right now, I just need to get some hair into the head so I can figure out which way the hair needs to go. So I said, that's my concentration right there. I'm gonna root some ugly heads probably. And I did, and I made cuddle babies out of them. And I'm, I'm only selling them for $69 because their hair is kind of funny looking. But hey, I got hair in the head and I figured some stuff out. I figured out about directionality and it didn't take me that long and it won't take you that long either. Uh, to figure out, oh, if I go that way, yeah, I see what's happening. Pull it out, you know. <laughs> but uh, you can make beautiful hair. Yes, it's clumpy up here, but nobody's gonna see that. It's not the kind of clumpy, it's not that clumpy anyway. It's, it's just some clumpy. It's just too cold to turn the heat off, but isn't it nice when it cuts itself off for a little while? <laughs> it's quiet. <laughs> My heat's a window unit, like an air conditioner, sort of. And uh, it uh, automatically cuts on and off. And it's just too cold up here to, uh, you know, they say heat rises and attics are always hot. That's just not always true. Downstairs from me, there is a woodworking shop and it is doesn't even have heat, so there's no heat to rise. Now in the summertime, yes, it's true. Heat rises and it gets real hot in your room. And you have to run there. Look at that. Ooh, I'm just in love with that hair. Oh. And you have to run the air conditioner 24-7 because you feel like you're going to die if you don't. But in the winter, it is super cold up here because there's no, no heat down below to sort of come up through the floor or anything. In fact, if I have the heat on and I have, let's say... I have a box laying on the floor or anything, a bag of groceries or anything, and it lays there for two hours. And you go pick it up, the floor underneath it is freezing cold because no heat got to it. Only cold from underneath. We're still not rooting very thick here. We're still rooting sort of thin. And uh, that's okay because you see what's happening. It's getting thicker. See, look how thin this is. Look how thick this is. Look at that, that's beautiful. And look how far down it goes. We don't need to root any further down on her forehead. I don't think. Anyway, we're gonna keep going. And uh, as we go around, I'm gonna turn the head a little and turn my hand a little. We're gonna make our way across the head and we're going to uh, get the hair thicker and thicker. And pretty soon we're, we're rooting kind of thick. And uh, it's going to look wonderful. <laughs> I think it will anyway. I just have a fondness for rooting hair now. I used to hate it. I used to go, I am never going to root hair. Never. And after I rooted the first doll, I go, Phew. finally I got done with that. I'm never doing that again. And then I just got a hankering to do it again. I don't know something about it that's a little bit addictive and, <laughs> and uh, I bought those heads from Bountiful Baby that he's had on sale like 
six or eight different heads. I don't know. I didn't buy every head. I bought a few of each size. Uh, not necessarily of every baby. <laughs> and so that I could root a small head, a medium head, a large head. Landon was the largest head, and he's not really all that big. Uh, he's bigger than, say, a 18 or 19 inch baby. I think he's 21 inches. His head's a little bit larger than your normal baby would be. And I am turning my hand here so that uh, this hair was going to have the right turn here. You can see it's starting to get long over the ears, too. That's why I say, you know, you can start out rooting ahead with little bitty short scrap hair. And you won't have to cut that hair. But it's filler hair, mostly. I've actually done it really willy-nilly all over the head. And where it only just looked like peach fuzz almost. And then I'd go back and fill in with the long hair and it would be so beautiful. And it would look really thick, but it wasn't. Because those teeny short hairs don't come out long enough to make the hair. It's hard to explain. I'm not good at explaining how something looks or but uh, the smaller hairs, then this, there's plenty, plenty, really, 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 really short hairs in this hair. And you see how you can't even tell it? This hair down here is gonna have to be cut, but this hair up here is not because it's shorter already to begin with. And uh, I mean, some of the hairs barely look like they were a quarter of an inch. I mean, they were that short. And I just kind of rooted it real sparse, and then I went back and rooted the longer hair. And it, and it becomes fill-in hair. Fill-in hair is just to take up space so you don't see the scalp, you know. It doesn't have to be, unless you're going to make a girl and make ponytails or something, all the hairs are not supposed to really be the same length. I did root a clown, and, and uh, I made all her hair the same length because I wanted to make ponytails out of her hair. And what a nightmare. That fantasy hair was synthetic. I didn't know it was. It just said fantasy hair. And, uh, I don't know. I just wasn't happy with it. And, uh, so I, uh, I, I vowed no more to use fantasy hair. I still have two colors. Uh, I think it's purple and pink. The one I used on the clown looks pink, but it was advertised as being red. But the other one, if you put it up next to it, you can tell the other one is pink. <laughs> they had a blue too, but they were out of it and I couldn't get the blue. I would have gotten the blue. Oh, I did get the blue. It was the green they didn't have. Cause I, I gave the clown half red and half blue hair. One whole side of her head was, was blue. And the other whole side was red. So she has one red ponytail and one blue ponytail. And half of her face opposite from the hair is blue and red. The red side has the blue hair and the blue side has the red hair. And she's kind of kind of cute. She's not super cute or anything. Now we're still going to make this little curve right here again. We're making this curvy, like a half moon, curvy. Because that's the best way to get that super special directionality that we need. <laughs> See, you can do this, you can do that. It's real good. Anyway, now I think I'm ready to go back over to here. We're going to root another row and uh, as we're going we're going to uh, pay uh, attention to how thick it's getting and if we think it's too thick we'll pull a little out if we think it's too thin we'll put a little more in and uh, we'll, we'll just get there we'll get to about right here and then we'll stop and we'll fill all this in here from the back and, uh, and she'll be done so I don't know, we're up to 40 minutes, I think, 
on this particular segment. I'm not getting much hair to go in. See, when you're starting to get hardly any hair to go in, you just need to change to another part of the hair first thing to see if it's that. Some parts of the hair, if it's real, real loose parts of the hair, it won't root real good because your needle's just pushing past all the hair. But uh, if it's super close together in the bundle, then your, your barb is gonna catch it. It's gonna catch some of it. Some of this dark look on this head, I think is from the steel of the, of the needle. Because when I hold it for a long time, I'll have this grayish looking look on my fingers. So when I wet her hair to, to style it, a lot of that will come off. It's just a stain, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. I hear some buzzing. I think it's a stink bug. I hardly have any bugs up here now because I know y'all saw me swatting at some bugs before in some of the other videos, but uh, my son sealed the window pretty good. It might still have a tiny crack that a bug could get through, but they're not coming in in big clumps like they were before. I mean, I looked up one day and it looked like a scary movie. So many bugs were up on the ceiling. I don't know what to call this one, this video. I think I might call it rooting an empty head because <laughs> we root, rooted with polyfill. We rooted with uh, patterns and no patterns and all kinds of things. We did different techniques like the uh, section technique and then we did that line technique and I don't know. I just think This looks a little too bare to me. This part right here, I don't like that bareness right there. And I'm not being able to get any hairs to go in that area hard. I think I got one or two hairs. There, I got a few now. Uh, sometimes you have to do this real easy and slow to get it to take the hair. I don't know why. It's it's part of the way the vinyl's made, I think. There we go. That's pretty good. And um, anywhere you've already stuck the needle, the needle wants to go there again. It just does. <laughs> so if you're rooting close to where you've already rooted, it's like the needle wants to slide right back into that hole. I don't know why. It's just something that happens when you're rooting. I think we're getting close to an hour here. It's 48 minutes. When we get to an hour, I'm gonna stop. And uh, we'll have one more segment. I don't know if y'all, maybe I'll go all the way. Y'all might want to see the whole finished product. I'm not sure. But uh, anybody can just quit watching when they want to. It's not like you have to watch all segments or see every step or stay with me through the entire video. You can stop this one whenever you want to and just go to the next one and say, oh, she made progress, look at that. You know? <laughs> Even though this hair looks really, really dark, when you look at it up next to the hair in her head, it's really, this is light brown. Sometimes I have to actually put it up next to the medium or the dark brown to be able to say, yeah, that's light brown, all right. <laughs> because it just doesn't look all that light. Look how dark that looks.
have to keep stopping and brushing so I can see that I am making progress because when you're rooting, sometimes it looks like you're not even making progress. You're going, I'm not doing anything. And then you brush it and you go, oh, look at that, I did something. <laughs> That's kind of a satisfying feel when it's pulling away like that. You know the hairs are going in and you know it's going to be making your progress. And See, now we have to turn again a little bit here. I like my rooting method. I watched a lady and she, uh, now her hair looked great when she got, get off of me. That might just be hair, but sometimes I think it's a bug. Um, her hair looked great when she got finished. Don't get me wrong. It looked super, super good. But she did that fill-in method and, oh, she just drew such the weirdest shapes on the doll's head. And I don't know, it just... And I watched three or four different people do the line method. They drew lines on their doll's head, and they only rooted on top of those lines. And I thought, okay, well, all right, but there's too much space between your lines. <laughs> At least I thought it was. I always end up going back and filling in in between my lines when I'm doing that. We're just in that section now that's just a big wide section. It doesn't really matter if you're rooting in rows going across or not. We're going to just root the whole thing anyway. So I just kind of work in an area sort of and then move over. See, I'm not getting much right there. I don't know why. You have to be very, very, very careful poking it, and then you'll start getting hairs there. I don't know why. Sometimes you just do. Some heads prove very hard to root, while others are super simple, and you can be done in just a couple hours. Usually it'll take between, I'm gonna say, three to six hours to root a hair, depending on how big the head is, what kind of hair you're using, kind of needle you're using, how much hair you want on the head, all kind of factors play into that. Uh, and one of the most important ones is how big is the head, because the bigger the head, the longer it takes to root them. When I rooted Michelle, she's got a pretty big head. Uh, I don't know what centimeters her head was, but I had her up for sale. And uh, the, the lady who wanted to buy her asked me to root her, and I said, okay. It took me six hours, I think, to root her. Uh, my very first baby I rooted was a, was a preemie, and it took me 15 hours. I was so beat when I got done. I did it all in one day. I got up real early that morning, like 5 o'clock, and started rooting. Spilled some on my pillow. And I kept rooting, other than just taking like a break to go to the bathroom or get a drink or something. I kept on rooting all day and uh, got finished late that night. About 9 o'clock, I think, or maybe 10 o'clock, I'm not sure. But whatever 15 hours is from about 5 in the morning, that's how long it took me to do it. And, uh, Oh, my hands, literally, my fingers were in a cramped position. You could not, I could not hardly move them. I had to just take something and, and massage it into my hands and into my fingers. And they just start doing this, cramping. Oh, it was horrible. And uh, I said, well, I'm not going to do that long anymore. 
15 hours. That's ridiculous. But each doll I got a little better and I did, was able to do it a little faster. But, uh, and that doll didn't even look all that good. And man, the hair I wasted, it was everywhere, all over the pillow, all over the, the, the table, all over me. Uh, it was everywhere. I don't know why it was like that. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing to make the hair fall out like that of the bundles and stuff, but it was just horrible. And now that I've learned what not to do, I guess I wasn't repositioning my rubber band and it was just pulling out, I don't know. And I wasted so much hair by having to get more and more and more packs of hair out to do it. But I was determined I was going to finish that doll. So, you know, at the beginning, things may not be the same as they are when you get better at it. And I'm not claiming to be any kind of a whiz at this. I'm just saying I can do it. Uh, I still have lots of room to grow myself uh, and be able to do it slightly better each time. One thing I don't like about not having any cotton is the head is, you know, it pushes in a little when you're, when you're rooting. You have to get used to that feeling with, it's firm with that. So it, uh, it doesn't do that. And there's no give. So your needle goes right in, you know, but we need to learn to do everything the right way, I suppose. Because, well, we're supposed to grow in our craft and help each other out. That's why I make videos for beginners. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to even begin. Uh, my student that came had no idea how to mix paint even. She goes, I, I know nothing. I've watched dozens and dozens of different people doing videos, and, and yet I feel like I know nothing. She said, it's just super confusing because everybody does everything different. I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and I said, I'm just going to ask you, will you put away what you saw on those videos for this, just this one day? Because I'm going to, what I'm going to show you may be contrary to something you saw on the video and it may be easier, but then you might later go, huh, that video, it, it seemed a little easier than what she did. And you'll, you'll pick your own way. But for today, I'm just gonna show you a way. And uh, and this, this way is uh, what I like to call a repeatable process. All those people who are guessing at the next layer according to how their doll looks, I think they're doing themselves a disservice. That's my opinion. And um, I got to turn that heat off, I am burning up. And uh, everybody's entitled to their very own opinion. And uh, I think that uh, a process that you could repeat again on another doll. I know a, a lot of people have asked this question in the doll group. I made this doll and it looks real good to me. But now I can't seem to repeat that process again on this doll because you didn't use a process that you could repeat. <sighs> that was another thing I decided. It's kind of like deciding how to do hair. That's the way I decided to paint. I need a process that I can repeat again. I need to know what I did to my doll and what I want to do next. And if it looks good, I'll put it in my process. If it doesn't look good, I'll leave it out next time. So that's what I did. I started with some premix colors that Bountiful Baby was selling, and I mixed them up to whatever I just felt like was right. I don't know. I didn't have any rhyme or reason to the way I did it. I just did it. And uh, if I thought it was too dark, well, I'm going to wipe it off and put a little more paint thinner in the water, and here we go. We're going to try again. 
And if it was too light, well, I stopped and I put some more paint in it. And little by little, I just learned how much paint I wanted in my concoction. And um, then I decided, okay, well, I need a, a process by which I'm gonna put it on the doll. Uh, am I gonna do one layer or two layers? Of what color first? You know, that kind of thing. And I, I messed around with it a little bit and I noticed that when I put it on in a different order, it didn't seem to look the same as it did when I put it on in the same order as the last time. And I go, okay, well, you know, putting on blush and then putting on flesh color doesn't look as good as putting on flesh color first and blush second. It just doesn't. And uh, a lot of people might argue that point, but... <laughs> and a lot of people don't even use colors. Uh, well, you have to use colors, but... I mean, they don't use pre-mixed colors. They use that primary method. And they don't even use flesh at all, a flesh color. No flesh color. They just model layers and layers and layers of modeling over the top of their doll. So they never have a color on them that looks like a doll's, a baby skin color. They just have super modeling on that doll and it turns out super red. And you can probably tell by my jade, she's not super red. I don't like super red. She's just got a baby skin tone on her. She has undertones. She has a lot of highlights on her that you probably can't see on camera because they just don't show up on camera. I messed her hair up. And, uh, but, uh, but she's not super red. I don't like super red. I don't make my dolls super red. Uh, yes, newborn babies when they're first born are super, super red. I'm looking for that newborn baby that's like a week or two old and it's not that red anymore. Because after all, they're not really newborn babies. <laughs> I hear a sound, it sounds like a bug. They're really dolls and they're supposed to be pretty. They're not supposed to look like little monsters. And oh. Uh, I opted for a little less um, flash. I, ca I call it flash when people put so much into a doll. I mean, I watched a lady try to make an ear hole in the ear of her doll with paint. We're gonna put this, then we're gonna put this. Uh, she put every color in the rainbow, one little dot of it right on top of each other and inside the nose too, the same thing. Every color she used. She put it inside the nose to try to build a color that would look like the baby had an actual hole in its nose. I go, okay, that's getting a little ridiculous. I do put color in the nose and I put color in the ear, but am I gonna be that elaborate with it? No, I just think that's a little too much. People are just taking it to some extreme that is too far, I think. I saw a lady, she posted, well, it was a lady in our doll group. She asked a question about uh, her veining on her doll. And uh, she said, I just seem to, I vein it, then I model it, and then I don't like it, and I take it off and all this. And this other woman posted the veining on her doll. She, she said, I've only just veined this doll. That's all I've done to it. And, you know, the generally accepted rule is if you can see it on a camera, it's too much. And you could see those veins so dark on that doll. And I was going, oh my goodness. And she veined that doll up like it was a super highway in a big city or something. All these squiggly lines all over its face and its head and its arms and it's everywhere. It, it hardly had any part of it that didn't have veins. And then I'll bet you when she starts painting that doll, she's going to put modeling on it. And uh, she'll probably use blue as one of her modeling colors. And I'm going, oh my goodness. If she uses blue on that doll, it's just gonna look like a dead baby or something. And 
There is a, such a thing as overdoing a doll, I think. I don't know. What do y'all think? Is it possible to overdo your doll? Yes, I think it is. Too red, too many veins, too much of a lot of things. And uh, I try to go with not unpainted lips, but softly painted sort of natural looking baby lips. Uh, those super bloody red lips, <laughs> they look like they've been to Mary Kay or Merle Norman or one of them places and got a makeover. Uh, my friend was following this artist to make a doll for someone. She got a custom order and she had her put, she had her putting purple on the lips. Deep, deep purple on the lips of the doll. And now she's trying to turn them red and she's having trouble doing them. She, she asked me for advice and I told her, I said, you know, red's the color the lips are supposed to be, not pink and not purple. They're supposed to be red, but they're not supposed to be so dark red that they look like they have on lipstick. And this woman that she was following didn't even stay in the lip line. She just took the paintbrush and went shush, right across the lips like that. And it was all out of the lip line and everything. And I'm going, okay, that just looks like you can't paint. The, the baby's lip color isn't all over their face. It's just on their lips. That's why I don't follow these people. They do such weird things. I tried to start following her on a doll. And when she started putting green on her doll, I said, okay, I'm done. Uh, green on a doll, I just don't think so. That's just too much, I think. I mean, why? Why would you put green on a doll? What's the purpose of the green? Well, I found out later it was to neutralize something she had done as a mistake, but she didn't tell everybody on the on the camera that, oh, well, I made a mistake and I'm gonna have to neutralize it now, so I'm gonna use green. If you didn't make the same mistake, don't do this. She didn't say that. But I just didn't put the green on my dog because I thought it would just be too much. And But I'm, I'm sure everybody else following her did. Okay, she said green, so here we go. And then they're putting green on their doll and they didn't even need to because they didn't make that mistake, you know. She said she'd gotten one of her colors. I think it was a, a red color too much or something. The wrong hue or something. And unless you mixed yours wrong too, you, you didn't need to put the green on. And I thought that was a little bit not right. Especially since she makes you pay to watch her videos. That's outrageous, I think. And she has so many followers. Oh, I mean, she has a lot. I bet she gets sponsored on YouTube and everything. And uh, she's raking in the dough and she's going, uh, I think I'll do blue next. It's like she's guessing. And you're going, okay, this is not something I can learn and follow because I'm gonna need her every time I make a doll because she guesses at the next layer. Okay, the way he looks now, according to that, I'm gonna do this. I don't know. Maybe that's the way everybody wants to paint now. But I think a repeatable process, I was saying all that to say a repeatable process is much, much better. Something that you can do every time and have consistently pretty dolls. I'm not saying don't branch out and do something different. I'm saying don't make the entire painting process different every time. But I'd say when you're a beginner, having a repeatable process is super important. Super important. Anyway, we're up to an hour now and we're getting close to finishing. Got a lot of front hair done, which is what I wanted to do. And uh, I think that when we come back, I'm gonna switch around and do a little bit of side hair and back hair again and try to fill in some of those gaps before I finish up the front hair because I don't know, it's just that, you know, you have to get every section right. And look how nice her hair's gonna look in the front. It's not gonna be too thick, it's not gonna be too thin. It's just gonna be beautiful, I think. Jade's a pretty doll anyway, I love her. She, I love her sculpt, it's just beautiful. 
Anyway, I'm going to ask everybody to please like and subscribe and share and happy reborning.